Hey everybody and welcome back to What's Still and Doing. It's a show about things that I've got going on in my life. Today we're going to be continuing our Potter House project. We're back in the room and I've got a lot of stuff done in the last couple weeks since the last time I saw you guys. If you've seen the first video I posted, I was making a Death Eater mask from the Harry Potter films, which I originally was intending on putting on a bookcase. The bookcase is the first project that I started. Well, it's the first project that I want to that I picked to get done first, and then I can move on to other things in the room. I had initially wanted to put that Death Eater mask on this bookcase that I'm working on, but as I started playing around with it, sitting it in the space, I decided I don't want it to go there. It just doesn't fit the theme in my eyes. I've got this beautiful bookcase, and it has kind of this flourish and blots feel to it, and then I set this one item that was uh, pertain to the dark arts there and I, it just wasn't sitting well with me so I've kind of changed that up a little bit and in the week since we last spoke I've been working on paper props to fill this cabinet and I mean a ton of paper props you guys so many things mainly scrolls so what I did was I spent two weeks sitting on the floor within this beautiful room rolling up paper scrolls I used parchment paper I used torn out pages from books that have like already been typed on already have script on them and i use piano scrolls uh like piano player scrolls so what you would do with those is put them in an old piano player and it would play music uh without anyone touching the keys it plays on its own and they look really great they already got like ornamental like decorative pieces on either end of the scroll and they're real thick so i had to do very little to those but everything else took so much work. I just sat in here for days and days and days until my fingers were practically bleeding, just rolling up paper scrolls. Once I got all of them done, I kind of like tied them together with uh, different styles of twine that I have, like hemp or rope or raffia, or as in the Midwest, we like to call it raffia. And I got all those together. And then uh, same thing with the piano scrolls. I twined those up. Uh, those took a little bit of hot glue so that I knew that they would stay together. Considering the fact that we're going to be moving all this eventually, I wanted them to stay complete and not break within the process. But I got all of them done, and then it was time to move on to aging and staining. And the process for that was really just taking a tub of dirty water, paint water, dirt, sawdust, and then just soaking all of these individual scrolls in that you know, bath, and then taking them out and laying them out to dry. Now, granted, this room that we're in is pretty much it, it. It's not only the place that I'm staging the props and everything for my Potter House project, but it's also the only place that I have to work on this stuff. So the entire floor was covered in like trash bags and paper towels so that I could lay out each individual scroll and let it dry. And then after it was dried, I filled a spray bottle with coffee and I just spritzed over all of the paper scrolls to kind of give them a speckled look. And coffee... It stains really well. Uh, those of you who have drink coffee and have spilled it on your clothes know this or on the floor. It stains really well, so it's great for aging things. So I sprayed all the scrolls, and then once they dried, because they're on the floor, I had to turn them over and spray the backside of them. Because even though it's like soaking into the paper, it's not running all the way down to the backside. So what you end up getting uh, just by spraying one side is the backside of each scroll is still uh, is a completely different color than the front side because that's where the coffee mist has landed. So I had to turn each individual scroll over, spray them again, and let them dry. Some other things that I did, very subtle things, was I soaked like some tea bags in some hot water, kind of dragged those over the surface of some of the scrolls, sprinkled a little bit of dirt or some sawdust or some like regular dust that I had around the house. Yes, I've collected regular dust that I could find around the house and sprinkled that over some props. Done some seriously weird things in my day, but it all looks really good in the end, so... I do not regret it. It all looks great. So, um, I sp like I said, I spent a lot of time off camera working on these paper props. It was very tedious. I didn't think you guys wanted to sit down and watch a video that was like two hours long of a time lapse of me just rolling up paper. There's a little bit of that featured in this video, but I didn't think you wanted to see a whole video based on me rolling paper up. Sounds pretty boring to me. I wouldn't watch it. In addition to those props, I did get some other props that I wanted to put on the bookcase. And these are things that are officially licensed Harry Potter merchandise, which I got from Universal, uh, Universal Studios Orlando. The first thing I wanted to show you is this interdepartmental Ministry of Magic memo. And they sell this in a kit 
which I got at the Scribulus store. It is the exit to the Gringotts Bank ride. It's like half uh, Wiseacres Wizarding Equipment and half Scribulus. And Scribulus has these memos in there, and they come in a kit. And it comes with several pieces of the paper, instructions on how to fold it, and stickers. The stickers are the seal that you see on the front, as well as a sticker that's the same color as the paper that you place on the bottom to keep the whole plane uh, assembled or together. And this looks awesome. It's very cool. What it's intended for, I think, is for people to like write each other notes and kind of, you know, send them to one another. But I think they would have, when I looked at them, I was like, those would make great props for the room. So I put a couple of these together and then in true Dylan Summers fashion, I ruined them. So basically what I've done is I've sanded them, stained them, pretty much the same process as the scrolls. They sat in that soaky water bath, brought them out, dried them, sprayed them with coffee, but I did a lot of sanding work to them so they look old and tarnished. Threw them at the wall a couple times so the nose would get bent and scrunched up. Um, but this fits the aesthetic of the room much more, I think, than this does. Very, very different. Um, and then as you can see, I didn't use that sticker on the back. I just ran some glue within the seams and glued it all together. And I think this looks awesome. Now I've already got the bookcase put together. It's completely assembled. You can kind of see some of it behind me. I will give you guys a closer look at that before this video is over, but I had these on there. I played around with them in different spots on the shelves and it just doesn't, doesn't fit. It doesn't work with what I, I've got going on over there. I think the reason being is that the cabinet has like a color scheme to it. Lots of browns, blacks, burgundy, red, um, and there's a little bit of gold. But nothing that's this bright blue purple color. I say blue purple because I'm colorblind and I'm not sure which color it is. So blue purple it is to me. But I, I intend on using these in the room still. And I think they'll look great on the entertainment center that I showed you guys in the last video. There's a lot of brass and copper and things like that over there. And nothing, no other colors really besides that. There's some wood grain and things like that. But I think this will look great on there as opposed to sitting on the bookcase and it's so bright that it's the first thing your eyes are drawn to. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work well. It doesn't fit the theme well. So I love these. I spent a lot of time on these as well as the paper scrolls, but I just don't think they're going to work for this project. Another thing that I got from the parks is a Mina Lima prop. And if you're not familiar with Mina Lima, they are the company that did all the graphic art for the Harry Potter movies, all eight movies. They did the Hogwarts acceptance letter. They did the books, like all the, like the uh, books that they use at Hogwarts. They did the, gosh, everything, the Daily Prophet, um, the Marauders map. I can go on and on and on with all the things that they made for the movies. They sell reproductions of those things in the park. In the last video, when I showed you guys the bookcase, uh, you could see that I had the Marauders map on the shelf, um, which is a, a Mina Lima reproduction that they sell at the parks. And I should mention that I also did some staining and some stuff to that as well when I was doing the scrolls. So I just really just sprayed the heck out of it with coffee. It is very close to what you see on screen in the movies, size, dimensions, everything, but it's, it's a very light printed parchment paper. So I just sprayed the mess out of it with coffee, wrinkled it up a little bit, and now I think it looks great. But what I wanted to tell you is that I got a book there uh, when I visited the parks. And one of my many trips to the parks, I found this book. Actually, I found two books, but more on that later. The book that I'm going to show you is The Tales of Beetle the Bard, which is the storybook that was gifted to either Ron or Hermione in Deathly Hallows from Dumbledore, which was in his will, which was given to them by the Minister of Magic. I don't know which one of those characters the book was given to, but it has the tale of the three brothers in it. Uh, what's the other story that Ron says? Babbity rabbity in the some yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I got the book and it was beautiful. It was intended as a, like a notebook or a journal. And I, it's the perfect size is the one, same one in the movies. It's a little thick in terms of how many pages are in the book compared to what the book looks like on screen. Uh, but it, it's almost perfect. However, just like everything else, I tore it to pieces as well. And this is what I ended up with. I took the book. I sanded quite a bit of the cover as well as the back cover 
and the binding. The binding is fragile, but as you can see inside, it's just intended to be like a notebook. But you won't open it when it's on the shelf. And this is going to be like the main, I don't know, this is what I want your eyes to be drawn to when it's sitting on the shelf. Like there's so many props. The, the bookcase is a meal in terms of um, officially licensed merchandise or uh, prop reproductions that are going to be in the room. So far, the most of them are on the bookcase. But this one, I think your eyes are going to immediately go to it and go, whoa, that's awesome. Because mine do. I think it is absolutely stunning. Like I said, I tore it to pieces. It went into the same process as the scrolls. Everything that I did in terms of paper props, same process. Soaked it in the water, sprayed it with coffee. Um, some of them beforehand, I sanded the mess out of it, tore some pieces off of it. And it did have a Mina Lima uh, logo on the back, but I sanded that off. Uh, as well as there was like a barcode here too. Sanded all that off, soaked it in the water, sprayed it in coffee. And by the time I was done aging it, it was in pieces. <laughs> it had completely fallen apart. The binding, like I said, the binding is fragile. It had fallen off. Uh, the back cover had fallen off. But I hot glued it all back together. And now it is beautiful. I am so obsessed with this. I, oh, I just love it so much. Every once in a while I do something in this room and I'm like, wow that's pretty sweet <laughs> and this is one of them uh, another thing is that it had this like gold uh, paint or flake or what is that gold leaf on the edges of the paper which I sanded a lot of that off but you can still see remnants of it it looks great it may not look exactly like the one in, that you see on screen in Deathly Hollows. it obviously wasn't this torn up maybe it was it was a little worn and torn but not this bad but this looks like it's real. This looks like it belonged to a young wizard and they read it over and over and over and they pass it down to their kids and their kids. And then finally I found it and now it's going to sit on the shelf in my make-believe wizarding shop. And I'm so stoked about this. So, so stoked. It looks absolutely stunning. I love it. Look at how cool. I did get, uh, in addition to that, I did get the uh, potions book from the Half-Blood Prince, and it's the same size as that one. It's a notebook slash journal type thing uh, from Mina Lima. But if you look in the movies, the book that there that Harry has is bigger than that. It's more like a like a regular size school textbook because of the size variation from what you see on screen to the one that I was able to purchase in the parks. I'm not, I decided I'm not going to use it. They do sell reproductions on Etsy. People make them on Etsy and sell them on Etsy. If I do decide to get that book, I'll probably buy one of those because it's more screen accurate. If I were to use it and it would sit next to that, you could, you would tell that it would make that one look more fake, I think. So that's just my opinion. I'm very picky. I said that in the last video. Extremely picky about this stuff, but that's the decision I've come to. I'm not going to use it. I, don't, I bought it. Like I said, those were like 20, 25 bucks in the park. Uh, oh, and also the paper airplanes, the um, ministry memos that came in a kit of, I think, 20, either like 16 or 20. And I've used two, three so far, um, but I'll have a bunch of those left over too. I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to have like 20 paper airplanes on one shelf. It just seems kind of silly, but you know, subtle details that'll sit in there. And this is going to look absolutely phenomenal on that shelf. I can't wait to see that one put together. I think that might be the shelf that I, or the cabinet that I am most excited for in this room so far. It's gonna look beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All the little trinkets, magnifying glasses and binoculars and stuff. Anyway, I digress. Let's get to showing you this bookcase so that you can, you know, get on with the rest of your day. And I can too. Let's go check it out. <music> All right, you guys, so this is what we're working with. I went ahead and put the Tales of Beetle the Bard book back in the corner where it's going to live. 
but this is it all assembled. As you can see, there is a ton of paper scrolls. They are pretty much everywhere. But the idea was that this whole case looked like it was just bursting at the seams with scrolls and books and paper, parchment, all kinds of goodies. So they are quite literally stuffed in there. Just stuffed in there everywhere. And I'm super happy with how it turned out. And they're all dirty and gross and stained and speckled and smushed. There's all kinds of good stuff going on in here. I'm really, really excited with the way that this turned out. And as I stated earlier, this is the this is where I have most of the props from the movies so far. And looking at it, they're all on the right side. <laughs> so I've got the Marauders map, the Time Turner, and the Tales of Beetle the Bard book. If I had placed those memos on here, they would have, you know, that would have been the fourth thing on here from the movies. But I think this is enough. Less is more in this case. And then these are the new books that I was waiting on. These few in the corner here. You saw me unbox these in the last video. Um, but those were the few that I was waiting on, as, as well as some of the ones that are stacked across the top here. I did fail to mention before, when I was doing the scrolls, I did these as well. So these are old books that I just ripped the, the binding off of, the cover, the binding, and then the back as well. And then wrapped them in the same twine that I did the paper scrolls and just stained the mess out of them. Lots and lots of staining went into this project, but I love it. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. That just looks so Harry Potter. I love it. I love it. Yes. Up next, I think is gonna be that bad boy right there. Oh, well that's, that's it for today, you guys. I know it was a really quick video, but I just wanted to give you a quick update on things that I had going on, and it primarily was just finishing up that bookcase. It was a lot of tedious work. It was a lot of off-camera work, but uh, I love it. It's done, and now I can move on to bigger and better things, and I have so many bigger and better things. So much to do. I can't wait to share it all with you guys. I just wish I had more time, and I could just do it right now. Do it all right now. More time, more money. Let's get it done. But anyway, let me know what you guys think of the cabinet now that it's done, now that you've seen it in all of its glory, all of its dusty, dirty, old, stained glory. Leave me a comment down below to let me know what you thought. And if you liked this video, please, please give it a thumbs up. I know everybody hates saying it. Everybody hates hearing it. It's a cliche, but it, it really, truly does help the channel out. So I would appreciate it. And if you're new here, just go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel, and then you'll be able to see videos just like this. It's, it's a win-win. So just go ahead and do it. All right, well, that's all for me. I'll see you guys. I'll see you then, or I will see you at another time.